Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, with all of that out of the way, we are officially starting the Sumeru Archon Quest Dreams Emptiness Deception. The world as it is and all that is in it. It is but a dream, empty and full of lies. That can't be good. The Subzeru's Festival Simsara finally comes to an end. The path to saving the god lies within the desert stars. I am the lord of the scarlet soil. My deeds are world-renowned, and even the strong kneel before me. All right, like a triumphant hero. Talk to Catherine in Sumeru City. It has been a long time since the Subzero Simsara and many things cannot be ascertained until Nilu gets back informed. Today, you go to the Adventurer's Guild as usual, dot, dot, dot. Uh, is she gonna get, like, ran up on immediately, like, from the trailer? She gets, like, Stabbed in the back. Hi, Catherine. Ad Astra Avisask. We meet again, you two. She might just get like hostile taken over, but not hostile, but she might get like assuming direct control by Nahida. Hi, Catherine. Do you have any commissions for us today? Commissions, huh? Hmm. Let me think. Oh, how about this? Please attend the Academia's Academic Symposium this afternoon and uh, recite a love poem on stage. Yeah, how about no? Uh, wait. Say what now? <laughs> and if possible, please also use your camera to capture the reaction of the audience upon finishing the poem. What is this? Hello? Huh? What kind of commission is that? I feel embarrassed. Just imagine the audience would definitely have a reaction. I see. It appears that you're not interested in this commission. I'm AR-60. Give me a challenge, lady. In that case... Please go to Port Armos and convince the Eremites there to spend some time volunteering at the local orphanage. Commissions are hitting different. What is happening? Hey, that's not any better. Mercenaries and orphanages really don't go together. We know you guys have a shitty life, but when you get older, maybe you can turn that life around and start making some money out of it. Mm-hmm. Damn. I'm sure the mercenaries will have some interesting reactions as well. Why is Catherine acting different? Uh, Paimon's gotta ask. Just who exactly has been submitting these commissions to the Adventurer's Guild? Oh, the commissioner? Hmm, well, actually, I just wanted to see the two of you in action. God damn it, I should have known. Ah, uh, it's Nahida. <laughs> Was it so obvious? I was hoping you would actually take one of those commissions. That kind of chance to observe humans doesn't come by often. Bro, I got jabated. And number two, I did not realize that she could literally mimic the voice of Catherine like that. Ah, so it's Nahida. Paimon just knew Catherine wouldn't crack those kinds of jokes. Jesus. When did you get into her head? Bro, this is scary. <sighs> From when she said, add Astra Abyssosk? So it's been you this whole time? Sheesh. Uh, are you done resting up, Nahida? Yes. I've been sleeping ever since we parted ways. And I even had a really, really long dream. What the hell? She's been sleeping for like three weeks, bro. What the heck? The Akasha can't take away... I was about to say this, so like the Akasha doesn't affect her. It was another dream about the Subzeru's Festival. Except it was a happy one. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, oh, she was stuck in the loop now. In my dream, I was sitting in the middle of a flower terrace, and everyone in Sumeru City was holding hands as they danced in circles around me. They danced round and round, and everyone looked really happy. I also got to sit on a gigantic flower carriage. Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, raised me really, really high above the ground. <laughs> and I was throwing an endless amount of Yalda candies at the children. Nice. You know, Nahida, Maybe your dream is how the Subzeru's festival really should be. It's meant to be a joyous time where everyone gets together to celebrate your birthday. Yeah, I was gonna say, maybe that'll be what happens like when all of this is fixed and she's able to like properly run her nation. But in reality... Huh? Wasn't I describing a really happy dream? Uh Why are you both looking at me like that? Wait... Could this be an example of the emotion known as pity? Damn, wait, pity? She's about to hit pity on the- like, no, that's- that's the gotcha system, Nahida. I'm so sorry. No, no! We are pitying you! That would only 
only make everything worse. We just don't want you to feel too sad. Damn, I need a hit pity to get this Archon. By the way, have you had a chance to visit Dunyarzad? How's she doing? The Homiyanis haven't allowed any visitors after the festival, so we mm. haven't been able to check on her. Yes, I paid her a visit right after I woke up. She was resting at the time. Her condition is stabilized. Good ship. However, since Elazar is a manifestation of the withering on the human body, we can only cure it by finding a way to take care of Ermansalt's own withering. You know what I'm thinking of? Elazar is a manifestation of the withering. And we know that the withering is a manifestation of the abyss. And we know that the abyss is what caused the destruction of Conria and like other civilizations. So I wonder if the hilly churls are like a mutation of Elazar at such a rapid pace because like that's like direct exposure with the abyss because like it says like it, your skin hardens and like the hilly churls have like thick black skin so, like if Elazar is the withering and the withering is the abyss and like the abyss is what caused all of the civilization's citizens to become hilly churls I'm wondering if Elazar is linked to the hilly churls at all but for the moment our top focus should still be figuring out what the sages are up to and what they're planning. Right. Who knows what'll happen if they manage to pull off another scheme like the Samsara of the Subzeru's Festival. So our first priority should be investigating and putting a stop to the sages' activities. As for how we should pull that off, let's discuss it somewhere else. There are too many adventurers around here. Oh, good point. Really? I never uh, noticed. Sorry, adventurers! We're gonna be borrowing Catherine for a little while. Paimon looks like such a schemer, dude. Act three, chapter three. Dreams, emptiness, deception. We're like literally like 10 feet from where we just were. Okay, so do you have any ideas on how we can investigate the sages, Nahida? Uh, Sino. Actually, I've already done a little bit of work on that. But for now, I want to hear your thoughts. Possess a key figure in the academia, possess a student and infiltrate. We could grab someone close to the sages to question them. I'll say a key figure? I've already tried that. But all the key members of the academia, even the core of 30 guards, intentionally avoid wearing their Akasha terminals. Mm. It seems that from the very beginning, they've been guarding against info leaks from the Akasha. I see. Of course, it could also be because they're weary of me. Have you already caught the sage's attention? I'm guessing not yet, but this trusting me would make perfect sense if they've ever paid attention to the urban legends about me. Yeah, how you're able to like slip out and communicate with others. In any case, I probably can't take over their minds directly. Uh, possess a student? No way, that's too risky. You mean it'd be too easy to get caught? No, it's not that. Mm. We shouldn't involve innocent students in this. That's true. A single mistake could completely ruin their lives. Doing that would be ignoring the safety of my people for my own selfish goals. How is that any different from what the sages are doing? That's a good point. Spoken like the god of Temeru. Hey, you're learning. Don't listen to what anyone else says. You're doing great. Uh, we could grab someone close to the sages. We're in the dark as of now. Mm. Since we still don't know anything about their goals, any rash move could tip them off and lead to terrible consequences. After all, every person in Sumeru City is one of their hostages. Mm-hmm, because of stupid technology. I can't think of anything else. Hmm. Are we really out of ideas? Where's all hate them, goddammit? Nahida, you're super smart, so you already have something in mind, right? Don't keep us in suspense, spill the beans already! According to a popular theory from the Vahumana Darshan of the Academia, mm? rejecting impractical motions at the beginning of a planning session will give more weight to the actual proposal. Okay, okay, but aren't you the god of wisdom? You don't have to use that kind of gimmick to make us take your ideas seriously. Well, I've been thinking that if I can't directly possess the leaders, mm. and if I can't get ordinary people involved... Get other officials involved. Then I should find someone who's already involved. Hell yeah. But hasn't decided to side with the sages. You're saying we should recruit a spy? Hmm. That does sound like it could work. Oh god, it could also be Alhatham now that I think about it. Oh, before coming back, ah! we met someone named Alhatham. He seems like he acts alone, and he likes doing stuff behind the academia's back. They probably aren't 
in cahoots. Mr. Sasuke over here. Actually, I already have someone in mind. Do you still remember that female scholar named Sataria? Sataria? Paimon remembers now. Isn't she the one who's always trailing behind the Grand Sage of the Academia? Yeah, the one that was in Act 2. She was uh, a real piece of work, too. We ran into her basically every time the sub -Zero's Festival repeated itself. <laughs> you could even say we're old enemies by now. Damn. Paimon still remembers the smug and mean way she always spoke to Nilu. Mm-hmm. They've always liked observing all kinds of people, and Sitaria has always stood out from the crowd. She mm. was born in the desert and was hailed as their greatest genius. Her academic mm. gifts allowed her special admission into the academia, and also gave her the opportunity to serve as the sage's assistant. Oh, Paimon didn't know she was from the desert. She must be pretty special then. Paimon feels like most of the desert dwellers around the city are working as mercenaries. Yeah. The name Sitaria means star. When she lived in the desert, she shone like the brightest star in the night sky. Later on, she was chosen by the sun. The star was given a place in the <laughs> daytime sky to complement the sun's dazzling light. Now... The moon is going to seek her out. I don't know how I feel about this, chat. Soon after, the star witnessed the sun scorching the earth, which brought forth many disasters. What the fuck is happening? So is the sun referring to Ruka Devada scorching the earth? Or is that just a metaphor? I don't know how seriously I'm supposed to be taking this. The star began to waver. Instead of staying beside such a sun, wouldn't it be better to return and light up part of the night sky? But in the end, she couldn't give up the radiance of daytime. To cope with her shame, mm. the star buried her guilt and closed her eyes. Yeah, I was gonna say, this is no longer just a metaphor. <laughs> like, what? From the sound of it, Satari is just hung up on the research opportunities here. I guess. But she doesn't really support the academia. She still feels guilty about not doing more for the desert, right? Mm. She's just running away from her problems. Yeah, she was like, yo, I, I ran away from my people. Indeed. When they are presented with complex moral issues, many people will simply plug their ears and go with the flow until the problem can't be fixed anymore. True. She's suppressing a lot of guilt, but before she realized it, she had already become the sage's accomplice. She can't deny her part in their schemes anymore. Sounds exactly like the person we need. Right. We must somehow make her face her problems again. That way, not only can we get useful intel from her, but she can also use it as an opportunity to redeem herself. Yo, redemption impact! From my past observations, Sitaria will take a day off from the academia every 10 days to do some shopping in the city. Tomorrow afternoon just happens to be a shopping day for her. Okay. That'll be our chance. All right, we got her. To prepare, let's go check out some of her favorite spots and have a quick chat with a few of the vendors there. Oh, the fortune teller. Little fortune teller person over here. This should be Sataria's favorite fortune telling spot. Uh, so should we ask the fortune teller about Sataria? Oh, damn, the stars. No, I already have enough information on Sataria. The most important thing now it's for you to pay attention to the vendor's talking style and key characteristics. Talking style and key characteristics? My poor lost lambs. Have you become troubled over your fates? Uh, hello. The divine voice of wisdom often echoes between mine ears. Holy shit. If thou be blessed today by the gods, I may be able to show you the way. I know you're the god of wisdom. You can't fool me. Huh? Really? Nahida, you've been whispering things to her? Shh. <clears throat> My friend here has some doubts regarding his future. Can we get a fortune reading for him? Oh, damn. <laughs> her voice switched up real quick. Hmm. <laughs> of course, of course. In that case... Hello? Uh-huh. It would seem that Harut and Marut are quite wary of hey, you. What the hell, these cats? <laughs> Perhaps, at some time in the past, you have somehow offended the gods. I, I didn't do anything, all right? That that unknown god stepped to me first. Hmm. I was just trying to leave. Only mocking the god of Animo, questioning the lord of Geo's financial savviness, <sighs> and brawling with the god of Electro. 
Do those count? The unknown god, Paimon! Hmm? Oh, nothing. Go on, pick an aspect for her to divine. My prospects in health, Em. You won't make it out alive, Aether. Health prospects. No problem at all. Oh. Oh. <laughs> the gods have spoken. The truth shall be revealed. You will die of indigestion. <laughs> Your life shall continue on for... For... Huh? What? Many, many tens of thousands of years? Impossible. Yo, Aether is literally a star. And Sataria's name means star. Holy shit, what if that was talking about Aether and not her? What if that was like a metaphor for us? Harut, Marut, did you two spoil my divination? I've never read a fortune so absurd. Holy moly. Bro, we're tens of thousands of years old? What the fuck? We're old. Uh, actually, Paimon thinks this is probably the most accurate fortune telling you've ever done. You know, what's 500 years? You know what I mean? We're a baby compared to how old we're going to be. <clears throat> I admit that the orientation of today's celestial matrix is uh, <laughs> suboptimal. As such, there will be no charge. Damn, I should have picked love. Is that so? Well, that can't be helped. If you were to bring some food offerings for Hart and Mart on your next visit, perhaps they could help you reverse the wheels of fate. Mm. Is this another one of Sataria's favorite stalls? It's just all in this one plaza. Yep, it belongs to a king. His father helped Sataria a lot when she first moved to Samari City, okay. so she still comes by whenever she has time. When I start talking with him, listen carefully to the details of our conversation. Hello, sir. Ah, dear customers. Would you like to look at some pottery? We caught wind of your great craftsmanship, so we specifically came to take a look. Oh, I recognize you. Aren't you Miss Catherine from the Adventurer's Guild? Mm. <laughs> Sounds like I'm in for some big business. That's what you think. Speaking of, where did you learn this trade? I suppose you could say it all started with my dad. He's a mason by trade, but I picked up an interest in clay while apprenticing for him. After that, I began making pottery by myself in secret. And I simply changed trades when my works turned out well. Although it's a pity that I'm no longer making much use of the knowledge provided to me by the Akasha. Damn, he's like, I'm too big brain for this place now. That's nice. You're making a living doing something you love. Aw. Hmm. How wholesome. So is your father still working as a mason? Oh no, not anymore. A few years back, he fell from a roof and broke his leg. Jesus. Since he had already saved enough Mora over all these years, he's just enjoying the retired life in Port Ormos nowadays. I see. We wish him peace and happiness in his retirement. I'll have someone in charge of logistics at the guild come by another day for some goods. We'll leave you to it. Take care now. Okay. No problem. Rest easy. All our goods are sure to meet your every need. Hmm. This should be our final stop. Okay. Sataria's always thinking of this restaurant when she's working at the Academia. So she always comes by whenever she's out in the city. Nahida, you've really thought of everything. <laughs> it's my duty to protect Samiri's citizens, after all. You're doing a good job. Hi there. I feel like I've seen you down by the docks before. Yeah, probably. Huh? Sorry, I don't quite remember. If I recall, you were having a discussion with someone about shipbuilding at the time. Oh, was it that commission? Ah, oh, that's right. I've always been really interested in feats of marine engineering. After all, I grew up in Leeway Harbor and spent my entire childhood Ooh. staring at the ships going in and out of the port. I came to Sumeru to study but failed to make it into the academia due to my lack of talent. So like before when Lumine was traveling the Seven Nations, it was this girl that she would do that commission where you go on the port and you ask the kids how many boats came in and out. This was back during when she was a child. <laughs> but I'm still discussing all kinds of problems with different scholars. And I'm continuing to study and perform research from the restaurant's basement. I'm sure I'll get to the academia after their next round of exams. What an admirable spirit for learning. Amazing! Uh, sure, 
But you'll find hardworking people wherever you go. So this restaurant has a basement as well? Huh. First I've heard of it. Damn, they're like making you guys work your asses off in the basement? That's right. It's not usually open to patrons. Most of the time, employees use it for breaks or to hold private events. I see. Hmm. Guess that makes sense. Well, good luck with your studies, Miss Chishan. Yeah, I was about to say, I can relay. I'm in the basement right now playing Genshin. <laughs> Thank you so much. As long as I can make it into the academia as an official student, I'll be happy. Nice. Good luck. You're gonna need it, lady. Corporate espionage out of the way. So, was that everybody? Mm-hmm. Three familiar faces should be enough for Sataria. Okay. But, uh, what's the point of all the information we've collected? Nahida, you still haven't told us how you're planning to make Sataria face her problems. Sataria is already used to avoiding her problems, so we must find a way to break mm. through her usual sensibilities. Okay. I remember that you mentioned that the Aramites in Port Ormos are all making a fuss about the upcoming resurrection of the Scarlet King. Although it's all just a boatload of nonsense, the faith of her homeland may turn out to be Sataria's soft spot. Yeah, she might catch feelings and want to go back home. Oh, Paimon gets it now! You want to take advantage of the guilt Sataria feels about her homeland. Although she knows she should return home to help the people of the desert, all she's done is conspire with the sages. If King Deshret was to criticize Sataria's actions... Hmm. So, how do we set that up? Well, the Scarlet King is long gone, and Sataria is also too smart to fall for any simple tricks. If we simply engaged her under the guise of the Scarlet King's believers, mm. she would definitely be weary of us, and we may not get anywhere. Yeah, how do we outsmart a five-head sage? But... If we were to borrow some of her close acquaintances to talk with her... Oh, God. Her reaction would probably be very different. Oh, God. Are we doing this? Are we body snatching now? <laughs> so, you mean you're going to possess those people we just talked to? Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. Yep. Possess them through the Akasha. Imply that they've already converted to the faith of the Scarlet King and then convey our made-up will of the Scarlet King. As long as everything goes smoothly, we'll get through to Sataria for sure. She'll never guess that we had anything to do with it. What could possibly go wrong? Otori's nearby. Scarlet King's people are kind of like out of whack right now. Desert stuff's going on. Scottamush is acting up. This is going to be fine, chat. Don't worry about it. Ah! going to use all the info we collected on these people. It's so that you won't slip up and break form. Possessing them will only work if you can manage to pass off as them. Yeah. Exactly. So, best of luck with impersonating them. Huh? Uh, best of luck? Wait, what? What? We don't know how to possess anyone. That's no problem at all. I'll just share all their senses with you once I've possessed them. As long as you're also wearing an Akasha terminal, the effect will basically be as if you've possessed them yourself. Oh, what the hell? Huh. That is pretty convenient. But why does he have to do this? Can't you do it yourself? Why am I even here? Why are we still here? Although I've been observing humans for a while, I've never been good at imitating them. I'm an alien from another planet. I definitely relate to the average human. Hmm. You're not wrong. It's always been painfully obvious whenever you try to pass as Catherine. I'll try my best. Uh, if it was at all possible, I would have preferred to leave these people alone. But seeing how things are now, I probably should just accept it and push on. I mean, realistically, I didn't realize that she was Catherine until the reveal moment. Like, I was like, I, w I had my suspicions, but I was like, why is she acting different? Yeah. Don't beat yourself up over it. We're only doing this to help everyone, and we'll only be borrowing them for a little while anyway. Yeah, who gives a shit about their free will? All right, then let's give it a go tomorrow afternoon. Oh, there she is. Oh, here she comes. Satori is here. Let's quietly follow her. When she starts talking to her acquaintances, We'll find a safe spot to begin possessing them. Like, we look super sus right now. As for how we'll sway her to our side, I'll leave that to you. I trust you'll know what to say. Uh, I'm not starting to feel kind of nervous. Okay, let's go. You, I'm the one doing the work. Looks like they've already started talking. 
Let's find a hiding spot and get started. All right. Let's go. Really? You're not exactly inconspicuous at the moment. Holy fuck. Holy shit. Oh my god. What are- we're fucking monsters! You really can't force anything when it comes to love. And besides, everyone around me has a very different background and outlook. Oh my god, this is so freaky. Aether's like, what the hell? Uh, are you still listening to me, Nabia? Oh, of course I'm listening. You were talking about troubles with your love life, right? I heard everything you said. <sighs> okay then. You just seemed a little distracted for a moment there. You can't trick me. Who the hell are you? Strange. Your cats seem pretty worked up. Is something wrong? I'm about to get attacked. I always thought they were quiet, happy kitties. Oh, what are their names again? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's Harut and Marut. Thank you very much. Ah, that's right. They are just little darlings, aren't they? Harut and Marut. Ahem. <clears throat> so... Which fortune do you want me to read for you today? Mm. You must have come for another echo of the divine voice of wisdom. Hmm. I'd like to get another reading on my love prospects, but to be perfectly honest with you, I feel like I've been a real mess recently. I'm down bad for this one person. Well, um, could you do a reading on how long it'll take me to finish my current project at work? I really just want to get it over with. Paimon is like, what the hell, dude? Ah, the gods have spoken. The gods are asking, Sitaria, why haven't you gone home? What? Why haven't I gone home? Damn. Do the gods really know everything I've been thinking about? Sitaria, why don't you just go home? It's a demand now instead of a question. Oh, the gods seem to be truly upset. I'm sorry. I know I failed the gods. Please pass on my most sincere apologies and ask for their divine forgiveness. That shit doesn't work these days, okay? The god who is speaking to me is, of course, uh -oh. the wisest and mightiest of all, the Scarlet King. Like, we're about to go to the desert and figure out all the lore of the Scarlet King, and he's probably gonna be like, bro, I heard you were talking shit. The S Scarlet King? No wonder he would make such a demand of me. Oh, wait a second. The Scarlet King passed away a long time ago. Even though news of the Scarlet King's resurrection has been spreading like wildfire, it's all just a misinformation campaign from the Academia. How can the Scarlet King still exist in real life? King Destrit's resurrection is a misinformation. Damn, bro. Imagine that, bro. Imagine fake news alive and well in Sumeru. What insolence. I am the Scarlet King's most loyal believer. Do you wish to refute his voice of wisdom? Oh, no, no. As a child of the desert, I am only reveling in his power upon learning that his divine glory has touched even this city. <sighs> I will think very carefully about his demand of me. I'm sorry. I must go now. <laughs> I was like, okay, thank God Paimon moved out of there. Oh, she just ran off in a hurry. She looked pretty upset, too. She's on to you. Well done. Sataria didn't seem to suspect anything amiss. She's like, I know someone was there. To have something she's been trying desperately to avoid show up out of nowhere and berate her? That must have shaken her to the core. Anyway, enough of that. Let's hurry and catch up to Sataria. Oh god, not again! Jesus, <laughs> this editing. I just got caught up in something. Okay. Oh, actually, didn't you ask me to help you look for work? What kind of work were you looking for again? Masonry work. That was the work my father did. Oh, right. Your old man's craft. Mm -hmm. How could I forget? Speaking of, how's he doing? Is he feeling oh, any better? Oh, you know, he busted his leg, but he's living lavish now. He's retired. He's walking more now. Oh, that's good to hear. I have been thinking a lot about him. If I could get some more time off, I'd love to pay him a visit. If you could find the time, please write him a letter. Please pass on that recently, faith in the Scarlet King has taken root in Port Ormos oh, and has begun to spread across Sumeru. He has a quick temper and has always been a devout follower of the Dendro Archon. 
I don't want him to get into a fight with those Scarlet King mm. believers because of a difference in beliefs. Oh? So, who are you siding with in all of this? The Academia or the Scarlet King? Oh shit, getting straight to the heart of the problem. Uh, I... <sighs> I'm so jealous of you. You were born a child of the desert. Mm -hmm. Yet you chose to betray the Scarlet King, and now you spend all your time with those crooks from the Academia. He was kind of a savage right now, what the fuck? What's so strange about becoming a believer of the wise Scarlet King? In fact, aren't Damn. you the strange one? The one who still can't pick a side? C can't pick a side? Me? Yeah, I said what I said. Whoa. Paimon had no idea you'd be so good at this! I wasn't too harsh, was I? Jesus! You really zeroed in on the issue and put it right in front of her! Mm. It might feel a bit overwhelming for Sataria. Aether's like, I don't know, I kinda like that feeling. I kinda like telling people how it is. I kinda like talking! But once everything is over, I'll be sure to pay her a visit to her mind and explain everything. Mm. Anyway, let's keep going. So, she's Sean. Have you noticed anything weird in the city lately? Like, as if someone was trying to preach to you about something? No, I've spent all my time studying in the basement. <laughs> oh, right. Speaking of strange things... Damn, she's like, I'm not a, this is my first time out of the basement in years. I celebrated the Subzerus Festival so many times that I lost count. That was really weird. Damn, Aether is actually like... Bro, what the fuck? You're gonna kill this poor girl. Wait, how could you be aware of that? That should be impossible. Nothing in the report indicated anything like that. Oh shit, she's like, I know what you people did to me. Are you still failing to realize that the Academia's lowly tricks could never deceive all of Sumeru's citizens? Uh-oh, you better get out of there. Jishan, don't tell me that you've converted to the Scarlet King as well. What an absurd question. You make it sound like I should be ashamed for becoming a believer of the Scarlet King. In reality, shouldn't you be the one who is ashamed? You, who worked side by side with the Academia, and treated people as nothing more than experimental subjects? Please, please stop! Well, you can't run away from your problems forever! You hear me? Even now, Satari is still trying to run from her problems. Aether's like, can we keep doing this? I like this too much to stop. Did I push too hard? I don't know, you tell me. She can no longer justify everything to herself. Hey, she's trying to talk to the guards. Uh, what should we do? This is the most important part of all. Quick, get ready. Mercenary, you're a member of the Corps of Thirty, correct? Please help me pass a message to the Matra right away. Uh -oh. The situation in the city is getting out of control. Uh-oh. Please, try to remain calm, miss. Tell me what's happening in the city. Don't snitch. Heretics are infiltrating the city, and they've already converted many residents to their side. Bruh! Heretics? What kind of heresy are you talking about? The kind Dotore lives for. Blasphemy. The Scarlet King! Many people I know have suddenly started believing in him, but he's long dead. It's impossible. Miss Sataria, nothing is impossible. Just do it! Nothing is impossible! You must face the truth, Sataria. You tread a treacherous path, and the longer you ignore it, the tighter the Academia's grasp on you will become, and the deeper you will be ensnared. Child of the Scarlet King, never forget that the desert that belongs to you lies elsewhere. What's so strange about becoming a believer of the wise Scarlet King? Oh, this is cool. In fact, aren't you the strange one? The one who still can't pick a side? Sheesh! What an absurd question. You make it sound like I should be You're gonna kill this poor girl! Stop! Sataria, why haven't you gone home? Alright, I'd be tripping balls too, not gonna cap. <sighs> it seems that no matter where I run, I only keep finding more believers of the Scarlet King. Mm. I have to say, this is a familiar feeling. I've also been running from my guilt this whole time. Guilt over my part in the Sage's plans, and from ignoring the letters from the children of my homeland. I guess this is like the best course of action, right? It makes sense for her redemption. You won't necessarily lose your research opportunities by facing the truth. 
Besides, did you really want to conduct your research while carrying such heavy feelings of guilt? How do you know me so well? Are you truly just a believer of the Scarlet King? Or are you the <laughs> god himself? I am a messenger. That's not important. The important thing is to pass judgment on the Academia and its sages, and to correct their mistakes. If you could provide some assistance in this matter, perhaps it could serve as a form of atonement. Hey, we got him! I've actually never believed in the gods, but I've always believed in serendipity. Your appearance must be a fated opportunity for me to get out of this wretched situation. Please tell me, what can I do for you? We got him, boys! Hey, when in doubt, gaslight. Don't actually do that. Great, we finally convinced her. <clears throat> How much Sheesh. do you know about the sage's current activities? This poor girl, dude, we literally made her think what we wanted her to think. That's actually kind of scary. I was just one of the designers for the Mast Dream Harvest Scheme, which is what happened around the Subzerus Festival. But I know very little about the full scope of the overall project. I'd assume that only staff with the highest clearance would have access to those confidential documents. However, there's something that's been really bothering me. I heard that a scholar who was previously expelled has returned to the city. And even oh, the shit. sages are still quite wary of him. An outcast that even the sages are still wary of? Yo, Dotore, where you at, my boy? To fight against the Academia, we will need to figure out the nature and the purpose of their work. Is there a way for us to get access to the confidential documents you mentioned? Victoria was a scholar that was expelled. It should be possible if we're willing to take some risks. After all, I'm an assistant to the Grand Sage, and I've been working on many tasks outside of the project. One thing, though, I won't be able to transfer the documents to you through the Akasha once I get my hands on them. Mm. The sages have always closely monitored all activities within the Akasha. Let's use the most primitive method! Send someone to pick up the documents tomorrow evening at the Academia entrance. The Academia entrance? Wouldn't that be too conspicuous? Don't worry about that. I assure you, this won't be a trap. I'm only suggesting this location because it'll draw more scrutiny for me to leave the Academia again. That is true. It'll be safest for me to distract the guards long enough to hand you the documents. If Death Note taught me anything, don't break your methodical life schedule. All right, this girl leaves the academia once every 10 days to go shopping. If she's leaving two days in a row, that's that's kind of sus. All right, I trust you. If I were to successfully complete this task, would it mean I've atoned for my wrongdoings? Yeah, sure. In reality, she won't atone. And then whatever happens to her like afterwards is like, I don't know. That'll depend on the judgment of the Dendro Archon. Oh, okay. Damn, it's up to Nahida. Her people are the ones we have endangered. As mm. the god of wisdom, she's also the one responsible for judging and guiding the scholars. Maybe it's time for me to find a god to believe in. <laughs> Where's your god now? Just as Nahida predicted, we've managed to bring Sataria to our side! It's that easy to manipulate people, it's crazy! The Traveler's execution was ingenious. He's the one who deserves all the praise. Well, now that we've made plans to meet again tomorrow evening, all we can do is pray for Sataria's mission to go off without a hitch. Oh, gaslight impact. Pray? But if we're going to pray to the gods, aren't we just praying to you? God of wisdom and guardian of the scholars? Pray to me, all right? I'm a god. I just fucking pulled off the impossible. Ooh? No, no. The truth is the true guardian of scholars. I've always believed that. Hmm. Anyway, let's meet again tomorrow evening at the Adventurer's Guild. Oh, man, all that gaslighting sure made me tired. Let's, uh, run it back tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. Catherine, we're here! Oh, um, you are the other Catherine, right? That's right. I suppose I'm the other Catherine in your mind. Can't we just call her Nahida? Shh, we're on a secret mission tonight, so we need to protect Catherine's identity. Now Paimon wants to be discreet, or she's the one yelling shit half the time? Yep. Paimon's right. We cannot fully rule out the chance that the meetup tonight is just a trap. If something were to happen, my existence may be the only trump card we'll be able to play. After all, the Academia should still be unable to confirm the existence of my consciousness in the outside world. Yep, yep! Exactly! Just what Paimon was thinking! I somehow doubt that. Hmm. Anyway, enough about that. Let's just make sure to be on our guard. Don't you feel like something is off? This is going a little too well. Off? 
What do you feel is off? <laughs> it's quiet. Too quiet. It's the middle of the night. Of course it's quiet. Damn. You're not getting paranoid, are you? Actually, that makes a lot of sense. What the fuck is Aether on about? <laughs> no, I think he's right. What? It really is a lot quieter than usual. Maybe it's just a coincidence. Maybe Sataria figured out a way to not only distract the guards, but also to get everyone to go to sleep early, just so we can exchange the documents in peace. Mm, that's a, that sounds a little copium right there. I also can't quite figure out why things feel a little off. But now that we're here, let's go ahead and meet her as we planned. Go to the academia. All right. Huh. There really aren't many people out right now. Okay, hold on. Let's hope it'll be this quiet in front of the academia and that Sataria managed to distract all the guards. Bro, even the fucking, even the freaking blacksmith's gone. What the fuck? Priority quest must complete before teleporting. Bruh, you're really gonna make me walk up all those fucking stairs? Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, oh, is this the Dotore scene? Hold on. Hold on. I remember Dotori was out at night and all the people were like, yeah! Why oh my god! I didn't care at this hour of the night. Uh, uh, holy shit! Bro! Ah, the triumphant hero returns at last. <gasps> and to a rather spectacular welcome. Oh my god! I say so myself. Expelled from the academia? Yeah, it was Dotore! Although these days they tend to call me <laughs> the doctor. Oh my the second! <laughs> Wait, he's he's number two! For your researcher friend, she has already been taken into confinement. With some basic caution, she could have discovered the listening device on her person. He's got like a he's got like a plague doctor bird on his on his shoulder. Scholar. <laughs> Oh my god! The people of Samir City! He's controlling them! Isn't he? What have you done to them? Bro, I fucking I called it! Minor adjustments to their what? Akasha Bro, tone. I literally called now this you shit! Deposit information directly into the subconscious. As you can see, all these lovely people now believe this traveler is a hero who has just saved the world. Yo, actual gaslight! My experiment is a success. Oh my god! And now it seems they can no longer hold back their sheer adoration. Oh no! Yo, man's know? actually no, gaslight no, gatekeep. Leave now. You need to get out of here. Jesus Christ! We have it here! We can't just leave you here! Nor can I abandon. Oh my god! Shit! I mean, she controls the power of the Akasha terminal, so it makes sense that she can restrain it, but. Don't worry. We'll meet again outside of the city. He knows who you are now. <laughs> Don't worry! You appear to have overridden their mental faculties with your own consciousness. To possess such a powerful mind. You must be the Archon. You must be the God of Wisdom. Holy fucking shit. Dotore is so fucking cool. <laughs> Dotore is so fucking cool, dude. I love his voice. Oh my god. This should be far enough. <sighs> Paima needs to catch her breath first. Dotore is rank. Two of the Fatui Harbingers? I swear to God, I thought Capitano would have been ranked two. Capitano's my most anticipated Harbinger, so I'm like, where the hell is this man at then? I was not expecting that, so confirmed. We got rank one, rank two, rank six, rank eight, and rank 10, from what I know. Yeah, Columbina is rank three. Yep, that's right. I remember Child's Dialogue mentioned that. Yo, bro, I literally called what he's doing. During the act one Archon quest, I'll hate them like knocked the uh like broke that man's akasha system because he was like going crazy and i was like he did it a little different but i was like that akasha terminal caused that man to like lose his mind if he just like 
if Dotori gets something like that and puts it within the Akasha itself, it can cause anyone with an Akasha terminal to literally be brainwashed. He did it a little differently, but he still is able to control people with the Akasha and change their subconscious. And he's now confronting the Dendro Archon. So he knows that that's her. And now he's probably gonna try to like track her down and get her Gnosis in return, protecting her people. He's like, yo, I could definitely see a, a scenario where it's an ultimatum, like do what I say, or I kill your people. Bro, Dotori's got the most fucking, I, I think his, he's got like the best swag in the game. His outfit looks so fucking cool. I really hope he's playable. I swear to God, like I'm, I would literally pull for Dotori. And I hope his other versions are present in the game. This is the prime of his life. This is a version of Dotori during the prime of his life. So this was during his scholarly years. So he could very well be Zandik. Like that could very well be Zandik from all the research notes that we've seen in Sumeru inside of the, the ruin golem in the forest. He could very well be Zandik. Uh, is the Hida going to be okay? We only made it out because of her. She can jump between mines. Hopefully she'll be fine. Paimon wasn't counting on running into a new harbinger here. <sighs> let alone such a high ranking one. Yep. That guy was number two. So scary. Mm. He called himself the Doctor. Remember, Kainari told us about him. Sataria did say that someone who once got expelled from the Academia came back recently, and that even the Sages are weary of him. Yep. Sounds like she must have been talking about the Doctor. We underestimated the scale of the problem. Yeah. Now that the Doctor's in the picture, we're no longer just dealing with the Academia. They're in cahoots with the Fatui. So that makes a lot of sense. Because Alfonso was talking about his mission was from the Doctor to capture an Aranara because they're connected to dreams and dreams are connected to the consciousness of the Dendro Archon and the Erminsul. But what are the Fatui after this time? Mm. Another Gnosis? And the Gnosis, of course. That's the end goal for them. But like in the process, they're doing all this other shit. We need to find a way to reunite with Nahida. Yeah, things would be a lot easier with Nahida's help. Nahida said we'll meet again outside of the city. But we can't just keep waiting around, right? Let's start our own investigation. Let's go find Tignari. Oh, right! Wasn't he invited by the sages to work mm -hmm. on some project when we were staying with him in the Vidya Forest? That has to be the same project. Is it the dream project? Like the mass dream harvest program? Even though he turned it down at the time, yeah. he might still know something. Damn. There's no time to lose. Let's go to Gundarvaville. Yo, we're gonna see Tignari again. Hopefully we see Kali as well. Hold it right there. Whoa. A blonde haired traveler and a floating fairy. Uh oh. We've got you all right. Take a look around. You've fallen right into our trap. Call the police, sir, but not for me. We are an elite brigade that commands the highest commission rate <clears throat> in all of Sumeru. Holy moly. We're here on the orders of a client known only as the Outcast. Damn, Dotori's got his sticky fingers in the Aramite too? But why wouldn't the doctor just send the Fatui after us? Local mercenaries might have an edge over- yeah, exactly. Like. Bro, that's fucking crazy that Dotori just came here as a single man. And he's like, yo, I'll literally use this nation's people against them. Do your worst. Why are we doing this? Why are you, why y'all doing this to yourselves? Time to pop off. <laughs> that was pretty rough. Jeez. Is that what elite mercenaries are like? Probably won't be long before we see more of them. Yeah. Looks like we'll have to keep our guards up. Oh, going up against smart people is tough. <laughs> anyway, let's keep going. Yeah, especially when your name is Paimon. Ignari! We got- Oh! Kali's here! Oh my god, I'm so happy. It was all worth it! Oh! It's the Traveler and Paimon. What are you two doing back here? Stay inside! Don't leave for anything ever until Dotori is gone. Kale! It's nice to see you again! Are you doing all right? Why are we being so chipper and happy? I don't think they know about Kali and Doto. Well, they must, because he's the one that does all the experimental shit. I, to be honest, mm. I'm not doing too well. My LSR has been progressing at a faster rate lately. 
I'm finding it harder to complete more intricate tasks. I'm gonna be so scared if Dotori and Kali see each other. As a result, Master Tainari is taking me off the patrol schedule. Aww. He will only allow me to stay here and coordinate other people's tasks. Oh, I see. Oh, Kale! It seems that curing Erminsul is our only chance. Speaking of Tainari, did he go off on patrol? We're here to talk to him! He just left the Avidia Forest a oh. little while ago. God damn it. He was headed to Party's DI. Oh, he's going to see Karkata. Huh? He left? But isn't Tainari always saying that he never wants to leave the Avidia Forest? Mm. He even turned down the sage's invitation! I thought it was weird, too. Master Tainari always prioritizes his work as a forest watcher above everything. Mm. He almost never leaves his post. He left in a hurry this time, though. He didn't give a reason? No. I only found out that he left through a message he left behind. Jesus. He also made sure to delegate all his tasks using a schedule. I know that before he became a forest watcher, Master Tainari once spent a long time conducting research at Party's DI. Oh, we don't have a lot of time, <laughs> so let's go look for him at Party's DI. Alright, nice seeing you, Kali. Please take care of yourself. Uh, don't worry, I'm fine. I'm used to living with Elazar by now. If you mm. run into Master Tainari, please send him my regards. Got it, will do. See you later, Kali. Uh, I hate that Notori's here. Don't worry about me, he'll be fine. Don't say that. Don't ever say you're good. Because when you are, you're actually not. Oh, 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 she's here. Wait, look who it is. What the hell? Nahida. Holy it's shit, how'd you get away from the okay. doctor? We were so worried about you. You are Nahida, right? Oh my god. I swear to god if she got hacked. Hey, this was supposed to be a touching reunion, but you're ruining the moment. We gotta be sure. Actually, it's very smart of the Traveler to be wary of me right now. Thank you. After all, the Doctor has shown that his technology can apparently even control human minds. The Doctor's technology. And in those research notes by Zandik, he started taking an interest in Conria technology. Plus, it's not like you could have known what happened after we split up and I was facing the Doctor by myself. Even a pool of stagnant water after a torrential storm can occasionally pass as a patch of sky. Paimon feels like only the real Nahida could come up with such an obscure analogy. <laughs> I agree. Please, Nahida, tell us more about what happened. Are those poor people all right? Yeah, she like reset their Akasha terminal. She like factory reset their terminals. When you left, I was still in the middle of restoring everyone's minds. Mm. Thankfully, when the doctor mentioned depositing information into the subconscious, he didn't mean engraving information into their minds. Okay, that's good. Instead, he did something closer to creating hallucinations. That was still within my power to fix. Luckily, I managed to finish my restorations and mind jump away from him just as he was about to capture me. Golden Apple 2.8 set us up so much for Sumeru. Hallucinations, brainwave activity, mirages, like all this crazy shit. And now it's like so relevant now. The doctor is already an expert at modifying Akasha terminals. Maybe it's only a matter of time until he captures my consciousness inside the Akasha. Uh, and then he'll just be like, give me your Gnosis. Now destroy your nation and all the people in it. Like, bro, that's so fucking scary. Would that mean you'd no longer be able to jump between minds? Then how do we stop him? He's still at the Academia, so it's possible he already started messing with the Akasha. I would literally go up to everyone and just fucking rip that shit out of their ear. I'd be like, you don't need that anymore. Ugh, it feels like he's toying with us. What a nasty piece of work. We shouldn't give up hope just yet. Let's try to find another way to attack this problem. Actually, Nahida, how did you know we were trying to get to Party's DI? Have you been waiting for us? Yes, I have. I can see the Traveler's elemental energy, hmm. so I deduced your destination by looking at the direction you were moving in. You didn't come here for sightseeing, right? Did you find any leads? Uh, I'm here to see my crab friend. We're looking for a scholar we know. His name is Tainari, and the sages once tried to reach out to him. Why don't you come inside with us and see what we can find? Okay. Let's just hope we won't get him into trouble. Arkata! <laughs> oh, okay, you know what? I'm I, I'm feeling a little better now. Karkata restored my faith in humanity. 
Whoa, Hapagia's here. You're not Tignari. Traveler. Yo! It's you. Long time no see. I, rem I know that green hair anywhere. Ah, the voice. It's Hapagia. Long time no see. Ah, what a pleasant surprise. It's so nice to see the two of you again. Nice. It's good to see you two when I'm not tripping balls. Who's this? She's a scholar we met in the Avidia Forest. When we last saw each other, she was still training in the... Uh, what's it called? Satyavada life? Yeah. That's right. We're old friends. Uh, you've come at just the right time. Ever since I've come here, hardly anyone has even talked to me. Hapasia, you're way too excited about this. Actually, for you to leave the Avidia Forest means... Oh, you're not in training anymore? Wait, no. Did you already finish your training and reach Pariporna life? Oh my god, she's literally living the good life. <laughs> what do you think? Damn, she's like, I'm too good for this freaking school. My consciousness has already managed to make contact with the divine. Wait a minute, are you serious? Wait, what the fuck? Uh, I'm really happy for you. <laughs> it's so exhilarating to share this sublime joy with others at long last. When my consciousness made contact with the gods, Ah, uh, what a supreme and unparalleled experience that was. But, like, you're standing in front of a god right now. I promised to help you understand what you saw from Ermansoul once mm. I gained deeper insights. My current self has not only gained true insight, but I can even help you establish a direct connection to the consciousness of the divine. Hapasia, please don't be, like, an informant. Please don't hook me up to the Akasha, and then Dotori just mind jacks me, and then I freaking die or something. Do you believe her, Nikita? I've never heard of anything like that, but uh... if you want to give it a try, I'll do my best to protect your consciousness during the process. Okay, make sure no crazy shit happens to me. All right now. Hold my hand. I'll help you establish a pathway to connect your consciousness. Ready? Yo, we're tripping balls once again, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go. We're getting high. <laughs> it took three betrayals for me to finally understand. The wait. world is just an elaborate tapestry. Wait, wait, what the fuck is this? My fury will never be closed. What is this? The first to betray me was a god. What the fuck? My creator. My mother. Please, she. She's God seeing Scott. Of all, she saw no worth in me, and I was discarded. What the fuck is this? The second was a human. My family. Oh, he's got the strip in his hair like my Kazuha. My friend. My family, my friend. Consumed by fear. He saw me as an abomination. The third was one exactly like me. A hope for the future. A fledgling barely out of the nest. What the hell? This was his life as Kunikazushi in the past. Powerless before his mortality. He broke his promise to me. Humans. They can't be trusted. And the gods fill me with sheer loathing. So I said good riddance. <laughs> I oh, we're getting Scott and Bush's lore and right now! My chest will never again be defiled by worldly filth. I will scrub away every last trace of human emotion. Then it will be empty. A blank slate and ready to receive a supreme gnosis. Bring oh, the there he is. <laughs> what the actual fuck? <laughs> I was not expecting this. There's no need to fear. The pain will be brief. Look at him. Your era He's a new Archon. Is coming to an end. I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that. Is she connecting to him because he has a Gnosis now? Oh my God. He's literally like the Raiden Shogun 3.0. He's a puppet and he has a Gnosis. Bro, I I literally thought we were gonna end up back at the Erminsel tree or something. And then I hear Scaramouche talking and then we're just getting all this fucking lore out of nowhere. Holy shit. 
So he was recalling three points in his life where he was betrayed. Once by his mother, once by someone he considered family, and then another was just like a pure encounter with like a child. Obviously the first one, his fucking mom. And we said that too, back when we found out that Kuni Kazushi was his name from the Raiden Shogun uh, dialogue lore. I was like, oh wait, if she created him, then that technically means that that's her son. And he refers to her as his mother, the fucking Electro Archon of all people. He sees her throwing him away as a betrayal, but she did that because she couldn't bear to kill him. So in her eyes, she was like, I would much rather have him not be a burden, like this divine weapon. She sealed his divine power and like just left him. He, he looked like he was at the, the domain in Seirai Island, uh, the one with the opulent, the husk of opulent dreams. Husk of opulent dreams might have lore to him because I doubt the clam set has lore for him. So yeah, so she dropped him off there. And then he shows up with somebody who has the red streak in his hair which is kind of similar to Kazuha. And then if you remember the Iridori Festival, which basically talks about the Raiden Gokuden and how Scott Amush like sabotaged the Raiden Gokuden, like uh, the, the weapon art of like crafting blades. He mentioned in that quest, he was like, for Kazuha's like great, great grandfather, he was like, does the name Niwa mean anything to you? And he was like, oh yeah, that was my name before I was adopted into the Kaedehara clan. I wonder if that is like the first generation person during that time. Maybe that's someone from Kazuha's family line. And then I guess something happened between them and he was referred to as like an abomination. So I guess some crazy shit happened. He felt betrayed in that regard. And then the third one looked to be like him interacting with some kid from a village. I hope that's not like any like Higi village nonsense because like we all know what happened to that entire village. But uh, looked like the kid died and I guess the kid promised to always be around for him or always be in his life or something like that he's correlating this negative feeling of like abandonment from his mom misunderstanding with his friend and then the death of a person that he cared about like all three of these things are just out of his control and because they didn't go the way he planned he just sees it as just like there's no way that this can possibly be my reality and then he was like i'll strip away human emotions altogether he's kind of like a wild a wild animal so during that final betrayal he transitioned so he went from being kuni kazushi to Skyrmoosh, which then means the Fatui got involved. They unlocked his divine powers of a puppet that were initially brought forth from the Raiden Shogun that she sealed. They unsealed it and that made him far more dangerous of a person. Yeah, so that was neither Greater Lord's consciousness nor King Deshret's consciousness. That was a false god. Did we actually just see the Balladeer's memories? Everything matches what we know about him. Yeah, and stuff we didn't know. But how is he connected to the divine consciousness that Hapasia was talking about? The gnosis that he ran off with. You saw it, right? You felt it, right? Oh, such a majestic god. Such a noble will. Such sublime emotion. He's a Scaramouche simp, ladies and gentlemen. If only that which beats within my chest wasn't a filthy mortal heart. Oh, great and merciful God, please grant me forgiveness and salvation. Whoa, she's basically taking on his mindset. Do you understand now? I'm afraid this is no Paripurna life, but rather... Paripurna death! Why are you so mean to me? Why is everyone hiding from me? What? I found divine wisdom. Shouldn't I receive praise and honor? Haven't I uncovered that light in the darkness? You have been bamboozled, lady. Wait. Yo, this lady is tripping right now. Have I? Yeah. Already lost my mind? It kinda? I mean, it's understandable with the thing you just saw. What the fuck is Scaramouche doing? Wait, something isn't right. Oh God, where's, where's, where, where the fuck is, where the hell is Tignari? Bruh, you're kidding! Bro, this is like non-stop, one after the other after the other. Animator! I'm on, do something! Where's Tignari, bro? Whoa. Oh! 
Palace? Oh, uh, whoa, she's in the uh, Sarastana. Whoa, what the fuck? I see you. Insane. <laughs> Bro, I need a minute, dog. I can't fucking catch a break. <laughs>